Hello, my name is Paul, and this is part two of a very simple project to help younger students or newer students learn to code Objective C using a simplified framework I'm calling Easy OC. Uh, hopefully, by now we've finished the first video. It's an hour long epic, not at all the lightning fast thing, I promise you. Sorry about that, but there you go, I tend to rant. Um, we finished that, and what you'll have is this kind of game where you can click on the screen and create balls that fall into either green slots to give plus points or red slots with minus points. Then go to edit mode and place sort of bricks in the way. And when you place as many bricks in the way as you want to, you can go back to normal play mode, like that, drop a ball, bounce it off, and see where it ends up. Ah, bad, never mind, I tried. Uh, that first hour contains all the fundamentals you need to do to have a fun time playing around with your, your Mac and making games that are actually useful and uh, potentially saleable in the future. This is a very short, very short, I promise, extension video for students who want to go a little bit further, want to push themselves beyond just the basics of a, a game and want some homework. Um, I think like AP games coding, okay? Uh, and I'm going to do a few things with you, with a couple really. Um, just to give you a head start, and I'm going to give you some more ideas for things you can do by yourself with just what you have already. That's the key here. When you've got skills to do uh, physics and, and click the texture and so forth, it's now about extending that to do more and more and more. So let's think of the absolute basic thing. This game works well enough. I can drop a ball like this. It lands in a red slot and just disappears. That's because our code, going back to our project, uh, just says ball removed from parent when it collides with something else which is fine, it works. But users love special effects because they're shallow. I'm shallow, I'm being honest here. Uh, we'll pay more uh, for apps that look good. It's quite simple. Uh, we'd rather have one app that looked fantastic and did one thing fairly well uh, than one app that did 50 things really well but didn't look good at all. So we want to add some sort of fancy pants special effects to this game to really add some pizzazz. And SpriteKit does this for you. In fact, it builds in special effects out of the box, which is wonderful. And one of the most common special effects are called particles. If you've played, say, Call of Duty or Battlefield and ever fired a rocket launcher, you'll have seen the fire and smoke effects. They are done with particles. Particles are thousands, if not tens of thousands, of very small graphics flying around in realistic waves. They used to make fire, smoke, snow, rain, bubbles, all sorts of small things. And they are built into Sprite Kit for you and are very, very fast. So we're going to make a uh, bubble uh, 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 ex explosion appear when our ball lands in a slot correctly. So let's do that real quick to get you jump started on, on progress here. So I want you to right click on easy game just here. Right click and choose new file. Then under iOS choose resource, iOS resource. And finally choose sprite kit particle file. Now click next. It'll ask you what particle template you want to choose from to get you going. And you'll see there's magic, rain, smoke, snow spark and fire choose fire for now and click next now name your particles i'm going to call mine uh, fire particles good and press create and there is the visual particle edit editor inside sprite kit if you don't see it make sure this right hand tab here is open and you're in the third of these options here the third one the little 3d cube these are all the things you can play with to make your particles look or work differently. And you can come back to this later and play with it to your heart's content. I promise you it's lots of fun to fiddle with these options. But for now, we're gonna make a couple of just very, very small changes. Firstly, look up here, it says particles birth rate. That's how many particles it will make all the time. As it's, you can see more and more fire particles flying up. Obviously the higher the birth rate, the more it creates, the faster it creates them. To the right of that is one saying maximum. That is the maximum number of particles that this particle system will create before expiring. Right now it's zero. Live forever. But I'd like you to change it to be 200. And watch. It goes poof and expires. And it will recreate and disappear again. Because now it's saying create just 200, then go away. An, an actual explosion effect. Beneath that you'll see position range 55.65x and <coughs> y for 5. That's the default for some unusual reason. Uh, our ball graphic is 44 by 44 in size. So change the x and y to be 44 and 44. 
and you will see this creates a, a squared off effect where the fire particles effect comes from a, a square shape rather than just one individual point. That's all we're going to do for now in this particle system stuff, but I really encourage you to fiddle with it more because it's so much fun and you can create such lovely effects with the system. For now though, go back to your gamescene.m file. We're going to upgrade this remove from parent call, which is quite boring. We're going to have a new method called destroy ball, and that's going to create our particles and then remove from parent. So beneath ball collided with, atom space, press minus void, and we're going to call this method destroy ball, and it has to take a parameter, the, the ball that should be destroyed, because of course there can be more than one ball on the screen at any given time. So colon, brackets, image, ball. Then add an open brace and a closed brace to make it a real method. And we're going to create some particles here. Now hopefully by now you'll have seen this magic make function. We can pass it whatever we like and it will do great things for us. And the same is true for particles. So first we give our, our variable a data type. In this case it's particles. Give it a name. We'll call it fire. Equals, square brackets, make particles from file name. Now we called ours fire particles. You can see fire particles or SKS. Uh, we eliminate the SKS and just write quote fire particles quote square bracket semicolon. That's all it takes to load your beautiful fire effect. So let's now position that fire effect exactly where the ball was that should be destroyed. So it overlaps the ball so you don't see it's been removed. To do that, you just say fire dot position equals ball dot position because that ball was passed in as a parameter here. We then add the uh, particle effect to our screen by saying uh, square bracket self add fire. And finally, remove the ball from the scene. So that's just a matter of saying uh, ball remove from parent. Brilliant. Now I should say, if you were to put this in a different location, you could say remove the ball from its parent here, what will happen? Well, you can see the ball is removed from its parent, fine. Then we create particles, fine. Then we say, particles, please place yourself where the ball was. But we just took the ball out of the scene. So where is the ball? Eh, bit of a problem, don't do that. Make sure you add the particles first, set the position first, then place the ball correctly, uh, and then remove it from its parent in exactly that order. <clears throat> so now in ball collided with, we can take out this ball and roof and parent thing and instead say self, destroy ball. Which ball? Well, it's passed in here as ball, so let's just write ball. And then again, copy and paste that line to replace this ball with a parent. And that's all it takes to get particle effects up and running. Press play now, or command R, remember? And you will see, rubber ball, puff, ball of flame. Rubber ball, puff, flame. Lovely. Very simple, classy effect that you can, of course, customize all you want to in your own time later. I should say, particles are made up of very, very small things. So look in this bottom right corner. We have 16 nodes right now. That's a combination of these labels and then these bounces and the glows and the bases and such. Watch this number, if you can see it on this video, as I create particles. You see it goes to 1,200, 17, 1,900, yeah. Lots and lots and lots of particles. Because they're very, very small graphics, little puffs of smoke and little fire and colored things. They add a lot of CPU work and GPU work. So obviously keep your numbers low, particularly if you intend to target slower devices, namely say iPad 3 is particularly slow. Watch out for that device. So that's particles, it looks great. Uh, how about if we had it so the balls are different colors? So you can see it's always a, a red ball. Very, very boring game. Um, if you look in the content folder of for the assets I've, I provide for you, you'll see ball blue, ball cyan, ball green, ball gray, ball purple, ball yellow. Uh, there are loads of options here. But we always use ball red. So if we look for where the ball is created, uh, here it is. We say image circle equals make image ball red. We can modify this so it loads a random image, ball blue, ball green, whatever you like, uh, depending on a random number. So to do that, uh, remember we have to pre-declare this image circle just like we had uh, here. We, we declare there's a variable gonna come and then fill it in with the right thing depending on a value. We'll do the same thing here. We'll say image circle, 
semicolon, declare, trust me, objective C, this thing is coming at some point, and then get a random number. So we want to say, give me a number, integer, it's a whole number, int uh, random equals uh, brackets make integer between. And you've already seen make number between, that's a generalized number that could be, it's, it's a float ultimately, it'll give you back a, a non-whole number. We want a whole number, so we're going to say make a number between, uh, let's just do 0 and 3 for the test case here. That'll return, obviously, a number 0, 1, 2, or 3. So we can now say, in here, a new kind of statement called a switch case. Because you could write something like, uh, if random is equal to, double equals sign, be careful of that, equals equals 0, then circle is that else if random equals equals one then yada 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 you could do that and that worked well enough but it's a bit painful to write uh, uh, a much nicer way and a more commonly used way for the longer if statements is to use a switch case where rather than if you say switch and replace this with just random so switch random do the right thing based on the value of random and you use what's called case so you say case zero if it's zero, then it's ball red. Uh, if it's one, then we'll do uh, let's do blue. If it's two, then let's do uh, green. And if it's three, case three, what should we do? Let's do cyan, yellow, yellow is quite nice. <clears throat> yellow, like that. And a closing brace here to end the switch statement, because there's one here too. Now, this will do something interesting. Let's press play and have a look what this does. Uh, if I create a ball, it's a yellow ball. Cool, it worked. I create another one now, it's in the yellow ball again. Another one, yellow ball again, yellow, 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 yellow. Well, that's not very interesting, is it? Or at least it is interesting, but for the wrong reasons. Why is it always a yellow ball? And this is a quirk of the uh, C-like languages, C, C++, Objective C, and so forth. Uh, that some people consider a feature, some people consider a horrible design mistake. Uh, please make up your own mind. And it occurs because of the way these case statements exist. Because by default, it will run this line, then automatically run that line, then that line, then this line. It will fall through the case statements. Even though, for example, random was zero, it should just run that one. It will run zero, then one, then two, then three. So of course, a bit of a disaster. So the ball's always yellow because if it's zero, it'll end up being ball yellow. If it's one, it'll be yellow. If it's two, it'll be yellow and so forth. Uh, and the easy fix for this, if you happen to like this, uh, if you consider it a design feature on a mistake, that is, uh, is to use this word break. And what it means is if random comes back as zero, great case zero, circle equals ball red, break, bail out of the rest of the switch statement and carry on here. So I put in break like this. You don't really need it at the end, but there you go, nice and neat. So if it's zero, ball red, then break out and carry on here. Press play now and you'll see it's blue, red, blue, blue, green, yellow, completely random each time, which is exactly what we want. A much, much nicer experience, hopefully with positive points. So there we go, look at that. Lots of different colored balls. The reason for this, and there, are, there is one advantage if you, uh, if you like this sort of thing, and I do admit it is helpful for this. If you wanted 0 and 1 to do the same thing, for example, if it's 0 and 1, create a blue ball, you could just write that, or you could even write that. So 0, and one, zero 1 and 2 all mean ball green, because it will fall through from 0, fall through to 1, fall into 2, and do ball green. So there are reasons for it but uh, some people really hate this. Anyway, that'll be a nice argument at your office tomorrow. So now we have random colored balls. That wasn't too hard, was it? And you've got nice particles and such, but this really is just the beginning. And I wanna give you a couple of ideas here for things you can do uh, to make your game better. Uh, you've seen particles, you've seen uh, ball colors. How about different types of pins? You've seen, uh, I can create pin, 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 pin. And all we do is rotate them slightly and give them a slightly different color. Um, how about if we make them different sizes? You know, they're always a 16 by 16 box. Why not make them different sizes? And this is really, really easy to do. So we have here, if editing mode and screen touch, if editing mode, 
uh, make size with width 16, height 16. Well, how about we replace the width with make size, uh, make random, yeah, make number between, there we go, number between uh, 16 and 128. So now it's always got a height 16, but it's got a random width between 16 and 128. Press play. Now you'll see editing mode, oops, editing mode, some long, some small. The game's much more exciting now because the balls roll around realistically. And that was a trivial thing to do to make the game much nicer. Or how about we think about uh, the, the easy way to win this game? You know, if I play this game back from scratch and I want to get maximum points, I, I just kind of click here, you know? doesn't matter how many uh, uh, blocks are on the way, I can place the ball exactly over the green slot and, and, and get infinite points. Uh, that's because we create the ball at the position that was clicked, it's here. So this is in screen in screen touched, uh, all the way down here, circle name equals ball, position equals location. We create the uh, ball at the same location the user tapped, which is great for doing XY stuff, but it sucks, uh, sorry, it's great for doing X stuff, but it sucks for Y stuff, because they can just hover over the slot and tap, 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 tap. How about we just fix that? We say, uh, before we do that, we do, uh, location dot y equals a fixed y, maybe seven hundred y. You know, the very top of the screen. So we can click here, but it always creates at the top. I mean, it's matching our x. You can see it's matching the x. Wherever you go, it matches the x. But the y is a fixed y now, so they can't bypass your pins. And that was really trivial to do, but it's made the game much much better. It's becoming a real game now. So enough of me doing your coding for you, please. You have lots of skills now. You ho I hope you've got lots of confidence. You've got a great foundation behind you. Please have a go at doing some more. Maybe make it so that when you hit a pin, it removes itself. So you know, if I place pins like this, the idea is perhaps to hit all the pins. So when you hit pins, it, it deletes it from the game. The ball carries on bouncing, bouncing, bouncing until the ball ends in a, in a slot and disappears. But the goal is to remove uh, all those pins with as, as few bounces as possible. Or perhaps you could limit the number of balls. So you could say, oh, listen, you've got five balls here. You've got to get rid of every pin in those five balls. Can you do it? And perhaps if it ends in, a ball ends in a green slot, you get an extra free ball. Ends in a red slot, you, you, you don't. So there are, there are so many things you can play with this game to make it better and better and better. And, you know, um, please do. It's a lot of fun now. You have these great uh, skills and this great foundation for you to just noodle around with and try things. Um, and I would love to hear from you. If you make great games of this, please let me know and I'll, I'll happily invest my money in your game. Not, not too expensive, obviously. Um, uh, 99 cents, please, would be helpful. Um, have a go. I mean, at the very least, think about edit mode. You know, edit mode, I can place pins. How about if I click again? Well, it creates another pin. Click again, another pin. What if I press it, put, a, put a pin in by accident? I want to delete the pin. Well, how about you say, if I have clicked and there is a pin there already, I am in editing mode, Delete the pin. You know, we already have this fantastic uh, method here. Uh, self object at point. Get back. Was there, was there a pin there already? Give the pin a name. If there was a pin there, uh, then, then remove it. You know, you can do really, really quick things like that to make this really much more fun. And at the very least, how about make it so that when they're in editing mode, they actually can place bounces around these huge multicolored things. Rather than always rectangles, which is quite boring, they can place bounces too to make the game much more exciting. So, there are just a few ideas. I've done some for you. Get, get your jump started. There's lots more to do. Go ahead, have fun, make games, uh, get great results, and I'm looking forward to hearing from you. And please get in touch. Uh, you know, I'd, I'd love to hear your uh, comments. Uh, the email address is help at stealmycode.com. Get in touch. But remember, please, above all, have fun, because coding is completely pointless if you hate it. Because if you're bored, I promise you, your users will be bored too.